What you're seeking is a blessing from God. You must expect a miracle. You have the power of choice. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Life Today Live. Randy Robinson here on this Friday. And yeah, you know, it has been almost two years of high anxiety. Uh, And I get it. I mean, my gosh. Uh, Aside from COVID, you you got the political situation in the country. You've got, you know... You, we still have, with the, the some cases that are, we're going to find out the results of soon, you got tension in communities where there could be violence. Um, it's just, it, it's, it's, it's the world is what it is. So how do you deal with that? Well, don't ask me. <laughs> That's why I got an expert on the show. And uh, I am excited to have Steve Arterburn back at Life Today. He's been on the broadcast program. I've done bonus interviews with him. It's great to have him on Life Today Live, he has a new book. It is called, uh, why is that book not showing up? There's my graphic. 100 Days to Freedom uh, from Fear and Anxiety. So if, uh, you, if you've been experiencing a little fear and anxiety, or you know someone who has, this will be a conversation that will help you. So Steve Arterburn, great to have you on Life Today Live. Thank you, Randy. Great to be here. And I hope and pray that uh, some of the things we say really might answer some questions for folks, uh, especially folks that uh, feel uh, ashamed uh, mm. over being anxious or, or fearful. And uh, I think we've got some hope and help uh, for everybody. Yeah, well, if, if you're feeling, feeling a little shame, just get over that right now because we're all facing it. We all deal with it. You're not alone. Judy, Loretta, great to have you two here. Everybody else out there. Chat is open, by the way. If you have questions for Steve Arterburn, feel free to throw them in the chat or talk amongst yourselves as you have done a lot lately. That's great. This is a time to to get a little conversation going that'll encourage all of us. So with this book, uh, Steve, 100 Days to Freedom from Fear and Anxiety. We all want freedom from fear and anxiety, but when I saw this title, I, I thought, a hundred days? Why does it take that long? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's such a great question, Randy, and I I think we could live on the answer uh, to that question because when we are in the traditional Christian faith, many times we're told, come to Jesus and all your problems will be uh, taken care of. Well, they will be taken care of, but it doesn't mean come to Jesus and your life will instantly be comfortable or that you will instantly have character and strength and and the uh, persevering spirit that God wants you to have. All of those things take time. And there are folks who have spent a lifetime in fear and anxiety. And when I mentioned this thing about being ashamed, uh, when COVID started, I had to talk to some people, even in my organization. And um, we were talking about, were we going to meet together or were we going to to do our meetings virtually, helping folks? And uh, one of the things that came up was that God didn't give us a spirit of fear. And that is absolutely true. But God also didn't give us a spirit of stupidity. And so we have to be smart. And the fact is that a lot of folks have lived with fear and anxiety for a very long time. If you were abused as a child and and then you came to Christ, uh, it probably was so significant that you could forgive this person that did this because Christ forgave you. But did that instantly wipe out the impact of the trauma of abuse on a child uh, and even as an adult? I don't think so. In some cases, it, it might instantly go away. But for most, they would need to have do some work with that, yeah. get some help for that. And it's no wonder that they would have an underlying anxiety about any relationship if the first significant relationship they had was abusive and even uh, sexually abusive. So if you've got all of these pathways in your brain that have been laid down and you are somewhat on alert all of your life 
And instantly there is a reaction in the brain to whatever might be a threat. And for you, many, many threats. Then just quoting a scripture or trying harder it isn't going to be enough. And so what we've done here is we've said, let us give you some uh, really good uh, de devotional thoughts. Let us give you some Bible teaching here. Great quotes from people over the ages that are addressing that particular issue. We'll give you some things to further study if you're really interested. And if you start putting this into your brain within 100 days, you're you're going to start experiencing some differences mm -hmm. if you'll live out what we're talking about here and that's the real struggle some you know if you're afraid to fly uh, right there and at DFW they've got a, a training school that will yeah. help you get over your fear of flying which involves getting on an airplane if you don't ever get back on an airplane you never get rid of that fear flying you have to go into it you have to face it and so what i've tried to do is to encourage people to face their fears uh, courageously and wisely and and realize that there are so many people that are experiencing your same walk and i'm really sad if anybody has shamed you with some kind of scripture or whatever mm -hmm. uh, i want to encourage you you have persevered you have made it through and perhaps now uh, this time could be an encouragement if you're still really struggling to, to go further and receive greater help for fear and anxiety. Did, have I told you about my issues with flying? Is that why you said that? Or do you just a no. random example? No. <laughs> okay. Have them? Uh, I, have to, I do have to deal with it, yes. Uh, but I, I, I've dealt with it, and uh, it's okay. But that is, if, if you say... It's weird because I, I really I'm not prone to fear. I guess I don't know uh, or anxiety, but that is the one area that I have dealt with it. So anyway, well, you know it's interesting too because um, here we're saying uh, every morning when you get up or maybe to bed, you read some of God's word. You you shift your thinking here and you get in tune or in touch with the Creator of the universe, the one who is much more interested in you and your future mm -hmm. than even you are. Mm -hmm. You don't even know how interested God is. Well, if you're afraid of flying, I think you probably know this. One of the things to do before you sit down in your seat is go by the cockpit and meet <laughs> the pilot and the co-pilot, and they become real people to you. And you come to accept there are a couple of folks here that know a lot more than me, and they're so much more interested in me landing safely at the next place, and it it helps. And so if I can surrender to them, you know, I tell you, when I sit on an airplane, I'm just the opposite, Randy. I I literally, I, I, I have a very high chance of having a wreck on the way to the airport the way I drive. But when I'm in, the, in that seat, I can relax because I really do feel like so much has gone in to me being safe, and I have nothing to do with the outcome. So that's kind well, of what we're talking about. Yeah, it is. And, we, you know, it goes to one of your points. Which, okay, you called me out. I always look in the cockpit. I always <laughs> look in the cockpit. So, but, it, you know, it, it, one of your points is exactly what my issue was and I still struggle with. Um, it's lack of control. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I love about you having a little issue with fear of flying? Everybody, I think, has something. Paul said he had a thorn in, in his flesh that bothered him. It's a reminder that we're human mm. and that there's some things that we're going to struggle with till the, till the day we die. There are other things that we don't have to struggle with until the day we die. We can experience mm. freedom from them, and that's what we're trying to help happen here and you know like with the covid thing um i draw the analogy of if if you're experiencing anxiety and some fear um well i think that's appropriate because if i'm going down a dark alley and there's a street light at the other end and i see this big figure it looks like he's got a gun in mm. one hand and a knife in the other mm. if i'm not feeling anxiety and fear that would cause me to turn around and run 
uh, then I'm I'm setting myself up to be hurt or to get sick. And here, I think it's warranted. Uh, these are uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. for us. We don't even know uh, whether or not, like over in the European countries, if we're going to have another spike of this. But but what we can do is we can go from being anxious about, about the things we can't control to going to work on some things that we can do to grow in character, uh, change our perspective. And, and God wants that for us. In Romans um, 12, 2, he, he says he will literally um, transform our lives by changing the way we think. Now, we need to do what we can to change the way we think. But God's saying, I will change the way you think. There's a supernatural transformation from God in our thinking. And so when you combine um, all that God wants to do and what we're willing to do, you can have quite uh, an outcome. I was, uh, I filled in for Rick Warren the other day out at Saddleback. And, you know, my, my message was stop waiting for God to do what God is waiting for you to do mm -hmm. and start cooperating with him rather than saying, I'm waiting on the Lord. When in reality, what you're doing is you're just wishing something would go away or, <laughs> yeah. or hoping that it will go away magically, wonderfully, instantly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we're all guilty of that at times. Uh, a couple of questions. Judy, uh, I don't know that you can meet the pilots. I don't actually try to do that. Uh, but Carol, yes, you can look into the cockpit as long as you don't have a menacing look on your face and don't linger too long. I think you can, you can still get away with that. Yeah. I, I look and smile. Uh, and if I can make eye contact, I do and give them a slight nod. But that aside. Um, oh, so, Steve, uh, there's, there's a term we know, know in the church. Um, and when we're talking about you know, God's spirit not being a spirit of fear, but of sound mind, but yet talking about having to renew our minds daily, there is also this, this term of, uh, you know, a fearful heart. Do you think some yeah. people are more prone to anxiety than others? Is it a personality thing? Is it a spiritual thing? Is it a, 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 an upbringing thing like, like you touched on? Like, where, where does all this fear come from i get the unknown but it's interesting to see we don't all respond the same way like with me i was like okay this is weird covid we don't know anything about it uh, i'm gonna keep my distance from people okay i'll wear a mask i don't know if it does any good but let's give it a shot um, it's worth a shot uh, um and other people man just it's like they fold it what's the root of all this do you think yeah well i think it's different for every person um my wife is, um, she's probably, well, she is one of the most, if not the most respected Bible commentators for Tyndall House Publishing. And she just uh, finished uh, the project, Every Woman's Bible, where they used um, commentators and scholars literally from all over the world, the most diverse group ever. And, and she, so her faith is really astounding her wisdom and knowledge is astounding, but she grew up in a household where uh, many times they had no food. Now you hear people talk about that, but in her case, um, sometimes she would, as a little girl, go to sleep on the kitchen, cold kitchen floor, uh, hungry and not know when the next meal was coming. Now that in itself is going to, to lend itself to a life of scarcity of mentality kind of thing, but she's much more reactive and afraid of what is to come because many times in her family, it was bad. And when it couldn't get any worse, it got worse. Mm. They only had a bicycle and then the bicycle got stolen. So I'm just telling you, if you come from that kind of a background, I think there's a predisposition that uh, has to, to be addressed. Also, I think genetically, you know, my, if you look at depression, my um, grandfather committed suicide and my mother uh, found him. And then I was on antidepressant medication my first year of college. So, so I know in, in the area of depression in my family, there's a strain of genetic predisposition. Mm -hmm. So whether it's the way you were brought up or genetic predisposition, or let's just even say this. 
let's just say it's it's spiritual weakness mm -hmm. or it's a result, a consequence of a sin that you, you committed. It really doesn't matter so much what caused it or what the symptoms are, but it matters what the solution is. Yeah. And that solution is complicated for people. We want God to bless us today and give us peace. And, and if this looming giant is in your brain that has controlled your thoughts and your peace and serenity for so long, we, we need to take care of that giant mm -hmm. because obviously trying harder, praying harder, <clears throat> reading the Bible more uh, hasn't gotten rid of that giant. The brain is an organ that is influenced by so many different things. We just don't want to think that unless God delivers me today, there's nothing that I can do to get better. Hmm. All right. We're going to talk some practical steps. I want to show you the book again. It's 100 Days to Freedom from Fear and Anxiety by Steve Arterburn. I also want to show you his website. This is stevearterburn.com. Uh, and, you know, he's got the, the a counseling show, New Life Live, I'm assuming you can get to that from the website. It would make sense. Um, you can. He's also we're on Facebook and YouTube and okay. all the other places. There you go. And and he's got a lot of great resources uh, out there. So I mean, if if you're if you're walking through this, just keep walking. That, that, there's no no shame in that. Uh, and and if you know someone that is struggling in this area, there's some great resources for you right there. Um, one thing I forgot to ask you before we started the interview that I wanted to was. Um, what are your? I know you've you've got degrees and things like that. Um, what what are some of your credentials for someone who is not familiar with with your ministry? Because it's not just ministry. I mean, you you've got some training. Yeah. Well, I have um, I have an honorary doctorate from the uh, California Graduate School of Theology, but my uh, master's degree is in uh, counseling and and um, I to. I wanted to run a counseling center in a university. Yeah. But when I went to seminary uh, to study counseling, I started. I wanted to work with the most severe folks. So I went to work in a psych hospital and uh, I was literally one of those guys. I cleaned toilets on the night shift while going to seminary. And I ended up uh, being uh, a vice president of that organization <laughs> in psychiatric uh, healthcare. And then eventually was given some money to start New Life which was uh, to do Christian psychiatric health care in secular psych uh, hospitals. Hmm. But I've written um, 126 uh, doctoral dissertations. That's how many books I have. And, yeah. and, um, and but, I, but my all of my training from college was in the area of counseling and trying to communicate truth to the most stubborn, uh, unconvinced people out there. And that's, it's just been the greatest life ever um, to be able to do that. And I always knew I wasn't the smartest guy in the room. And so I, you know, new life isn't me. It's me and these other really brilliant uh, therapists and counselors that are uh, Christians and we bring different ones in. Um, and, and so it's just been a, a wonderful experience to do that. I also, you know, started Women of Faith, which had mm -hmm. uh, 5 million women come. And uh, I'm, um, I've done, uh, well, my wife and I have just completed our 18th Bible project. One of my Bibles is in the Museum of the Bible. <laughs> and um, I'm in a New Life's in a partnership with Museum of the Bible nice. to try to get the truth that is, so uh, beautifully displayed there at the museum mm -hmm. to impact uh, our families and our local culture. And, and boy, do we ever need it right now. I, I like the fact that you, when you want to deal with the most difficult people, you go into Christian counseling. I don't know. I don't know what that says. But it, well, you know, that show Dirty Jobs, uh, we're kind of the dirty jobs of the, the Christian faith. And it's so rewarding. Uh, one of the things we do, we do a weekend marriage seminar where you don't just hear somebody speak, but we bring in Christian counselors. And so you hear me speak, and then you go into a group with other couples and, and a certified Christian therapist, and you go to work. Hmm. Well, we have people that come that hate each other. <laughs> Some have restraining orders. They can't even stay wow. in the same room. Oh. And we have about a 95% 
success rate because we're approaching it from a different perspective. And, and, and so that's the worst cases, but a lot of people have pretty good marriages. And when they come to this, uh, they get to experience a marriage they never dreamed they had. And, you know, I go to counseling every week. Some people think I should go twice, but I'm, I, I don't have time. But I got to tell you, I'm having the best marriage right now of my life. And I, I, the reason I say that is it wasn't always that way. And, yeah. and being a Christian didn't make my marriage uh, wonderful. Uh, but, I, but the work that we've done together has brought us to the best place ever. It's work. I mean, it's it's all work, and and we shouldn't be afraid of that. I think we know that. That that's not a warning. That's just letting you know. Hey, but it does work, and that's the beauty of it. Let's talk about the 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 fear and anxiety a bit more because I, I want people to hear some very practical things they can do to work through this. So so talk us through some of the things that if someone's struggling that with this, they're like, hey guys, I'm I'm watching. You know, this is great but I need help today. Where do they start? Well, I would uh, start by asking someone to grab a sheet of paper and a pencil or a pen. And I, I would just ask you uh, to, uh, and if you're doing this, if you're interested in this, then obviously you're relating to the fact that, yeah, I've, I've been experiencing some fear and anxiety, uh, discomfort mm-hmm. that I don't want to be there. And so I would write down what do I do when I experience this? Now, um, I can tell you what I do. Uh, I start cooking. I I get busy. Uh, And then that kind of gets me through the shock of whatever I need to deal with. And then I can settle down and I can come back. But that isn't what a lot of people do. I, I don't drink, but a lot of people, they turn to alcohol, they turn to drugs, or they get angry. What is your reaction to being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I, it's really great if you could just write those things down and get an honest picture of what you're doing and how you're impacting other people. And then um, I would ask myself, how much time am I spending every day trying to address the fear and the anxiety with quiet time, God's word, and, and prayer? And, and that's where this little book comes in. That'll help you with that piece. So now we're trying to reset our brain. We're trying to get a different perspective. And then I would ask, who is it that I can talk to about what I've been experiencing, mistakes I've made in dealing with it, and some different perspectives I have? Is it my spouse? Is it a counselor, mentor, sponsor, pastor? Mm -hmm. I need to talk to somebody. You know, we need to talk to people about it. People that say all I need is God and my Bible are not reading the Bible that they think it's all they need. No, we need community. Uh, we need to be open uh-huh. and honest. And when we open up about something that we're not very forthcoming with, it takes about half the power out of it right there hmm. just to be able to share it with somebody. So that's where I would I would really start. And the extent of, of it are... Or if nothing makes things better, then maybe I need to see a Christian counselor who really specializes in uh, severe fear and anxiety or trauma or something like that. Don't settle uh, for a life that's just riddled with a discomfort. It doesn't have to be that way. I think I've been guilty in the past uh, with my children <laughs> of, of some bad advice, which is you just just deal with it. Just get over it, you know. Uh, as if it's a choice, you know, like you can choose to be feel f- or you know anxious or not. Uh, do you think? Do you think people choose anxiety or is it external, out of their control? I think people. Uh, I think sometimes that's really actually good advice for a child to get over it because you don't want a child that takes a little bit of uh, anxiety and then now they're creating a whole dramatic episode around something as simple as uh, one of the people I like, like somebody else, you know, we're, this is life here at age uh, 11. So you're going to have to get over that, but we want to be loving and caring and listening, but also we want them to know that we believe they are competent to handle situations like that. Mm. And that is just as important as nurture. If every time my little baby has a little thing and it, 
feels like I've got to swoop in and I've got to fix it and I've got to solve it. I'm essentially saying to that child, I believe you're incompetent now. You will be incompetent forever. You're going to need me forever. And that's not good either. So we want to be loving and nurturing, but we also want to set them on a path to know that life outside the Garden of Eden is going to have a lot of discomfortable, uncomfortable things, mm -hmm. and it is our job to deal with it. I, I, I say to my kids all the time, have a great day. And of course, you know, if you don't, it's your fault. And so <laughs> I, I want the best for them, but I want them to know you're, they're responsible for how things are going to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> made me laugh. Um, I, here's here's a question, and I know some people may not like may not like the question, may not like the answer. Can can we really get through the difficult things of fear, anxiety, even depression, without God? Yeah, you know, um, getting through it it means a lot of different things to different people and sure. folks find ways. Um, I, I always like to ask people that ask me that, that aren't Christians is why, why would you want to do it without God? People, you know, people find ways to get through things, but even with God, you know, the, there isn't a guarantee that you're going to get through it and get over it. You know, uh, Spurgeon was the greatest preacher probably ever to live. And when he was in his 20s, someone yelled fire at one of the biggest meetings he ever held. Seven people were trampled to death. It was just like, like the Astroworld thing. And uh, people were critically injured. And he went to bed for two months over that. Finally got, got back to preaching again. But he only preached about nine months out of the year. And the other three, he literally went to bed in depression hmm. and, and anxiety and been just being overwhelmed. And so I don't think he ever got over it or got beyond it. He did get through it. And, and so I, I use him as an example because he was a man of just an incredible faith. Sometimes faith um, isn't the cure for things that have happened to us here on this earth. Faith is part of a of a combination of things that we need to stay healthy and get healthy. And if we're ignoring, for instance, faith without uh, eating a good steak every now and then it, or, or good nutrition, you're going to die mm. if it's just faith. Mm. And so we've got to, we got to understand we're, we're human. It's a fallen world. And sometimes the repair work goes beyond just developing a stronger faith life. I think, I think that a lot of times faith is the foundation to get to the repair work. Yeah. You know, uh, all right. Steve Arterburn, very helpful, very good conversation. Good chat. People affirming that they needed to hear this today. And that's always good. I want to give you the last words or anything we didn't touch on anything, uh, even that you want to promote or more resources, anything that, that, uh, people just need to know before I let you go. Well, I just want to say that God is for you. And sometimes we get in these emotional ruts and you think God isn't there, for, but God is for you. He's, he is the God who is, the Bible says, rich in mercy. And if you're not experiencing that, then maybe uh, it's time to reach out to somebody else to help you get back to that connection with a God who absolutely loves you, made you, and is crazy about you. That's good. Sure. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate all that you do and taking a little bit of your day to share it with the audience. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Appreciate you guys hanging out. If you know somebody that this will just maybe point them in the right direction, give them a little hope, hit that share button. If you haven't hit subscribe or follow or whatever you hit, wherever you're watching, do that now and, uh, and come back. we got more great interviews next week and the week after. Well, I will say I'm taking Thursday and Friday off next week for Thanksgiving here in the United States. But uh, we'll be back on Monday. So I uh, hope to see you again next week. Appreciate you guys hanging out here on Life Today Live. Check out Steve's book. Looks like this, 100 Days to Freedom from Fear and Anxiety, as well as the website, stevearterburn.com. More resources for you. We'll see you again next time. To believe it, to receive it, and to receive the healing from body, mind, and soul.